Welcome to Church of the Chair, where you guys speak and I listen. I'm your host, Dee, and today we're talking about 20, yes, 20 of my favorite books. Since you guys have been enjoying the discussion videos, I got another one for you. I mentioned redoing my top 20 books of all time, and several of you commented and said you wanted to see that, so I'm going to do this like an old school discussion video cut into two parts. And why this is a discussion video is because I want your input on what your favorite books are. I'm hoping that I get whole threads of just people listing their favorite books. That's what I want from you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into this. There will be no cuts in this video, just me talking about 20 books that I love in no particular order until we get to the top 10 in sorry the top five in tomorrow's video so I'm doing 15 today five tomorrow and tomorrow's video will probably be much longer and more in depth than this one but first look what I got for Father's Day you guys, if you guys don't know, if you guys can't tell, I'm a huge fan of The Nightmare Before Christmas, and my kids pitched in together to get me zero. He's a coin bank, but also they figured out that if you take out the plug down here, you can put a light in there, and he lights up. So once he's finally all lit up and everything, I will have him back here. Let's see here. I'm going to put him over here for right now. Isn't he cool? Isn't he cool? Anyways, um, yeah, I always show off the stuff that my family gets me, um, and I, I wanted to share that with you. Hopefully, you find it as cool as I do, but let's jump into the list. A book that I've talked about numerous times over and over and over again, and you're, you're probably going to recognize most of the books on this list, is The Gargoyle by Andrew Davidson. This book is fantastic. I've never read anything like that, and that's like it and that's pretty much the overall theme for every single book on this list this is a story about a man who is in a car accident and ends up burning off his genitals completely they're gone um he doesn't even have the dingle the dangles you know um and he ends up falling in love with a sculptor and the stories that are in this book because it's it's kind of like an anthology, like an anthology movie, uh, where it has four different stories, and then the framing story of the love story between the sculptor and the injured, burnt-up man. He's burnt all over from head to toe, and he's lost his, you know, reproductive organs. But yeah, fantastic, weird, odd, um, majestic, magical. It's absolutely fantastic. Next up, we have one that I have heard numerous times. If you like this book, your your opinion doesn't matter or, or whatever, whatever it may be. But I read this book with my wife. It took us nine months to read it. And ever since then, I st daily, this is no exaggeration, no hyperbole, daily I think of scenes from this book. Just little things in life will will remind me about this book. And that is David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest. It's an absolute behemoth of a book. It is a very difficult read, especially because David Foster Wallace wrote it with the intention that he wanted you to be hands-on with the book. He wanted you to, to break the monotony of reading and flip back and forth to the end notes. Uh, some of the end notes are short story length to novella length. There's a quite a bit of stuff and you can lose your place it's uh it's intricate it's beautifully woven together and i've never read anything like it uh the next one is an absolute classic of horror literature uh and that is ghost story by peter straub uh, my friend jessica sent me this beautiful absolutely gorgeous first edition <clears throat> And it's even, it's got the plastic and everything on it, but there's the price tag. But yeah, uh, she sent it to me as just a, a gift because whatever. So Jessica, if you ever see this, I haven't talked to you in a really long time. Not since I left Twitter, but if you see this, I love you. Thank you so much for this. Um, it is, of course, a, 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 it's a ghost story, um, but it's not your average ghost story. And it goes to some pretty wild places. The story goes that St that's why Stephen King this is the book that made Stephen King want to write with Peter Straub because and I don't agree with this he said he was amazed to find someone who wrote like him I don't think these two authors write anything like each other and it's hella obvious in the talisman and black house but uh it's uh 
that I, I remember there's very specifically in this book, the tar paper shack and the scenes with that. And of course, when the, after the snow falls and everything, then the town's cut off. It's absolutely amazing visual sequences. The next one is one that I talked about recently also is Eleanor by Jason Gurley. I don't hear nearly enough people talk about this book. It is a, uh, a representation of depression and grief in literary format uh, it has striking visuals gorgeous scenes where and it's a story is about these uh, i believe they're twins i haven't read it in quite some time but these twins uh either one or both of them die and the other one goes looking for one of them in in like limbo kind of deal um Maybe one is still alive. I, I can't really remember, but I, I remember the striking images of like the dinosaurs and the meteors and the, the pitch black abyss that one of the characters is in. The mother's uh, grief is personified into a, a whole world. It's absolutely amazing. If you love Neil Gaiman, you definitely, definitely need to check this one out. Unfortunately, I went over to Amazon. It looks like it's out of print, but they do have some used copies available for relatively decent price, but I couldn't find anything new um it doesn't seem like the publisher which is crown publishing pretty big publisher um i i couldn't find whether or not they were the book is still available on like bookstore shelves uh next up we have another one that i spoke of and the reason why all these are placed together is because i had them you know of course in a stack from the other video i did the books that i love that you've probably never heard of um i will link to that video at the end of this one but palisades park by Alan Bernert. Brennert. I always get that wrong. It's B R E. Brennert. And this is a story about the real life Palisades Park. I believe it's a fictional t um, retelling of the family who owns it and everything that they go through. I. I cannot stress enough how beautiful and wonderful this book is. It is a family saga. <clears throat> and Alan uh, Brennert has an affinity for Hawaii. And there's a lot of that here also. He's written other books like uh, Molokai and uh, Daughter of Molokai, Son of Molokai. There's a, like a whole series. He's also written other books uh, in the speculative fiction uh, genre. But this one is based wholly in the real world there's no supernatural anything but i am an absolute sucker for anything amusement park circus uh carnival anything like that you're going to see several of them on this list i'm a sucker for those types of stories so yeah palisades park another thing before we continue on if you want to re buy any of these books and help out the channel there's an affiliate there's affiliate links down there in the description that you can click on run over there grab them also there's an affiliate link for uh, it's not really an affiliate I mean, maybe kind of is but a scribd link uh if you click on that numerous of these books are on scribd but if you click on that you get a free month my kids get a free month it works out well for everybody next up is a recent read of mine that absolutely had to go on this list and that is black leopard red wolf by marlon james this is hands down my favorite fantasy novel of all time i've tried i have i have quit more fantasy books than i have actually finished and that's including Robert Jordan, uh, Brandon Sanderson, Joe Abercrombie, all that stuff. In fact, going back through Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, I didn't get past the opening chapters of The Two Towers before I quit it. This is unlike anything I've ever read. Like I said, that's going to be a theme for this video and tomorrow's video. This is a wholly unique experience, unless you're really, really up on your African lore. Um, and I wasn't. So everything in here was new to me. And I, it was brilliantly written, brilliantly plotted. There are twists and turns, action, adventure, love, all everything that you could possibly want out of epic fantasy is in that book. Now we have one that is the most recent addition to this list. I was going to keep his first novel on this list, but I got to thinking about it. I was like, no, because the first Ohio is the name of the book that was on this list. I have changed that because this one is going to stick with me far longer than Ohio uh, because it, it was so much more meaningful to me. And that is The Deluge by Stephen Markley. And no, I have no idea why the video artifacts like that when uh with blue colors i don't know it just happens but yeah this one is about uh a race 
to save the planet, but not in a spec get a fiction fantasy sci-fi kind of way it's all based in real science so if you are a fan of things like the martian by andy weir uh definitely check this one out it is a chonker a lot of these books are on this list it is 880 pages but i believe it is worth every single page Next up is a thriller. I do not read too many thrillers. I have a problem with figuring out the twists. I have a problem with the suspense not really not, not really working for me uh, because most thrillers are very one note, the cardboard characters, or they use the same characters over and over and over and over again. This series does that, but I've never read anything like the original book or its sequels, and that is You by Caroline Kepnes. Easily the best thriller I've ever read. And one of my favorite literary characters of all time is Joe Goldberg. I am currently reading the fourth book in the series, For for You and Only You. I'm reading that to my wife, and we are absolutely loving it. Every single book, something different happens. It's not all the same thing. And in this in the fourth one, it's getting it's it's getting wild. We have 150 pages left. Sorry, 130 pages left. <clears throat> and I just, I, I'm constantly surprised at how she keeps this series fresh. Even authors like John Connolly, which I absolutely love. None of his books are on this list. But even, you know, with his character, Charlie Parker, it gets old sometimes. It feels like the same old, same old. With this one, there's always, always something fresh coming down the pipeline. The next one is a book I almost removed completely from my list, but I went back and I read certain sections that made me fall in love with the book to begin with, and I had to keep it on there. I have definitely fallen out of love and out of trust with this author. I have disliked his past three books, and that's that's worried me off because I have disliked as many as I've liked from him at this point, and that is NOS 4A2 or Nosferatu, yes, I know that's what it stands for, sorry, I got a comment, that someone goes, did you know that it's pronounced, yes, I, I do know that, but uh, anyways, by Joe Hill, there's something special about Christmas Land, man, there's something absolutely just, just special about it, and while there are numerous Easter eggs for Stephen King's books, I still feel like this is wholly a Joe Hill book, the same cannot be said for uh, The Firemen, for Strange Weather, for Full Throttle. All those feel, what is it, reductive? It, it feels it feels like the, the only reason they exist is to pay homage to his father. And I really liked his first three books, so much so that I'm drastically disappointed and I won't be buying any of his stuff brand new anymore. I'm going to wait a while. But yeah, um, I don't even know if he's working on a new novel. He's been busy with comics. Uh, but yeah, this one's on the list. If I had to rank it numbers, number wise, it would be all the way down number 20. It just happened to be here in the stack. Next one is, I would say this is my favorite strictly horror novel of all time. As far as a novel that is meant to horrify, disgust, cause dread, to, to whatever you say that places horror in a horror novel in the horror genre, this would be my favorite one, and that is The Ruins by Scott Smith. One of my favorite tropes is bad things happening to bad people, and this book has it in spades, man. Uh, if you don't know, it's about a, a group of 20-somethings, I believe. I don't think they're teenagers, who end up in, uh, what was it, uh, Mayan temple or something like that. They find out in the, uh, out in the, I believe it's Mexico. I could be wrong, um, but they find an old temple, and they end up being picked off one by one, and they end up getting stuck on the top of the temple the movie is not all that great but the the novel is absolutely fantastic so if the only experience you have with the ruins is that movie that was made it's not a terrible movie it's not great either definitely pick up the book because i watched the movie before i read the book not knowing well, I read the book not knowing that it was the book version you know that the uh, the adaptation was adapted from I read that not no I read it not knowing that even though I'd seen the movie I was okay I was on the fence about the movie but I absolutely fell in love with the book now the next one is Blood Meridian 
by Cormac McCarthy. Uh, we recently lost Cormac McCarthy. He passed away at 89 years old, and this book has been on this list since since, since I read it. It's not going anywhere. It would definitely be in my top 10. Uh, this is a truly horrifying, brutal, even beautiful at times literary experience, and if you have not read it because you hear that he doesn't use quotation marks or he doesn't use punctuation, so on and so forth, I beg you to try this one. At least give it a shot. If it annoys you, I, I can't help that. Everyone has their own personal preferences. But yeah, definitely give this one a shot. It is a masterpiece, but this one is tied for my favorite McCarthy with Child of God, um, but I had to pick this one because this one, I believe, has just a little bit more literary merit, especially with the Judge character. Next up, we have, I had to pick a Haruki Murakami, this entire shelf over here, this entire top shelf is Haruki Murakami. I have limited editions, I have all of his, what I call his rainbow uh years or whatever all the reprints of his stuff with very uh, colorful popping covers um i also have a couple alternate editions of them one of which is i'm going to show you now um but i was i was torn between 1q84 and this book which is after dark i think i have read this one more than i will ever read 1q84 i've already read this one six times i've read 1q84 twice i listened to the audiobooks book and then I read it also but this one is the one that made me fall in love with Haruki Mitakami everyone said if you want to start with him start here and that's what I tell everybody because this is definitely a gateway drug um, I know you can say that about most of his books but for me there's nothing else like this one 1q84 is this is this this isn't gonna be right it's more of a portal fantasy kind of deal like you can feel that you're outside of the world in the or outside of the, the real world in this one it feels like you are in the real world but weird stuff is happening um and what i mean by that is there's a th there's a camera that's a character in the book it's told from the the camera's point of view like the camera pulls back almost like in a script um but this one also has some of the best dialogue I have read there's a scene where these two characters are just sitting in a diner talking back and forth and it's my favorite part of the book there is some slight thriller elements but that's not why you read Haruki Murakami you read Haruki Murakami for his characters for his themes that kind of thing so yeah I had to put After Dark on there all right we got we got three more before we cut this off and then we tomorrow you will get my top five and those will actually be numbered Next up, we have Sing, Unburied Sing by Jesmyn Ward. The vast majority of this work feels grounded in reality until you get to the end, and the ending still haunts me to this day. It is a, it's not only gorgeous, it's not only beautifully written, but it is very upsetting at times, and that's Jesmyn Ward all over the place. Jesmyn Ward really <clears throat> aims for your heartstrings, and this is one of those books. It won the National Book Award. She's won twice. She won the National Book Award in 2011, I believe, and the year this book came out. Um, <clears throat> I there, There's another one that there's a scene in here where somebody ends up getting sick, like to their car sick, to their stomach. And I remember how striking the visuals were in that scene and how concerned I was for the characters. And it's such a very, very small scene in this book. But those are the things that make me remember books. It's the small scenes, how they're, how they're treated, how they're delivered. And this one absolutely nails the small stuff. Uh, next one is one that I tried to do a review on. I lost the footage and then I ended up posting just the audio. Uh, you guys didn't like that whatsoever. I got like 50% uh, dislikes, and that's fine, um, because I, I was upset also, and I didn't have time to refilm it. But that's Amber Grease, Grease, Grizz, Gray, whatever it might be. I I know how it's supposed to be pronounced, but my, my mouth don't work that way. Anyway, so this one is kind of cheating, because it's a bind-up of the City of Saints and Mad Men, Finch, and uh let's see here hang on oh uh, what's the other one? Oh yeah shriek and afterward and finch city of saints and Mad Men is a mosaic novel finch no shriek is an a novel length 
afterward that is written like the afterword of a book and Finch is a noir detective story all of this happens in this fantasy world that is lush and glowing and absolutely horrifying I was surprised at how brutal and gory and horrifying this book was especially with how beautifully it was written I've never read anything like it take a drink every time I say I've never read anything like it but yeah now, now you're drunk but anyways this is this is one of those books I had so much fun with it absolutely devoured it he writes relatively short books um, normally and these are only about two three hundred pages a piece but this chunker is 800 some odd pages so yeah definitely if you can get this version of it get this version of it and I got the link down there in the description finally finally we have one that almost made it into the top five. I, I debated a long time. I was like, no, no, no. The other ones are far more important, and they are, especially to me. But it would be number six on this list. That's definite. Here we are, back on that Carnival Circus bullshit. Yes, The Pilo Family Circus by Will Elliott. Never read anything like it. Take another drink. Uh, this is a story about a young man who goes into an alternate universe where uh, it feels like the entire alternate universe is a circus. Uh, and I, I, I don't want to tell you anymore. It's crazy. It's wacky, wild, surreal. It's amazing. I hear that the author had a nervous breakdown or a mental break after writing it. And all of that stuff comes off in the pages. Um, I remember the way he describes grease paint and being absolutely in awe of his word smithery or whatever you want to call it his prose is is wonderful uh but it's also hella fun and that's two, two things that i need in a book i need beautiful writing and i need to have fun but that's all the time i have for you today tomorrow come on back we'll talk about my top five books um if you've read any of these books let me know what you thought of them down there in the comment section but also like i said at the beginning of the video i want your picks for your favorite books because I might come across something that I haven't even heard of before. So definitely please, you know, throw all that stuff down there. And until next time, <laughs> you're not editing. You're not editing. This is why I like editing, because I even screw up my outros. Until next time, I'll hail the chair.